Hello there, I'm Mike and welcome to Disney Parks Addict. Today, we'll be taking a look at all the rides and attractions found at the Alton Towers Resort for 2023. The resort is located in Staffordshire, England, which is about an hour north of Birmingham and an hour south of Manchester. It is owned and run by Merlin Entertainments, a market leader in theme parks that also operates other attractions including Thorpe Park and all the Legolands, as well as some midway attractions like Madame Tussauds and Sea Life Centres. The Alton Towers Resort includes 12 amazing different themes lands, an indoor water park, five on-resort hotels, a mini golf course, and even spa facilities. Stick around until the end of the video to see what exciting additions are coming to the resort over the next few years. Similar to the Magic Kingdom in Walt Disney World, you will begin the day by taking a monorail from the car park to the front entrance. You enter the park into Towers Street, which is home to the main merchandise shop, some dining locations, guest services, and a great view of the towers, which gives you a scale of how big the park is. At the end of the street is the Skyride, a gondola ride system that will take you to the Forbidden Valley and then on to Fountain Square, located behind the towers. Not only is this a great way to get around the park, but you'll also get some amazing panoramic views of some of the different lands, as well as the park's extensive gardens. As with all my guides, I will head around the park clockwise, which takes us to the next land, Mutiny Bay. This is of course a pirate-themed land filled with a nice range of attractions. In the park's central lake, you can see the first attraction, Battle Galleons. This is a fun interactive water ride where you will need to become a pirate and man the galleons as you shoot water at other ships and onlookers. This is a perfect ride to keep cool in the hotter months as you will most likely get soaked. Non-riders can also take part with the use of the various water cannons surrounding the attraction. Heading further into the land, you will come to Heave Ho, a rock and tug ride that will spin as well as swing back and forth, which makes makes it a nice little ride for the younger visitors. Next up is Marauder's Mayhem, a classic teacup attraction that will spin riders until they can't walk straight. Replacing the traditional teacups are a bunch of gunpowder barrels, which makes for a real explosive ride. For the next attraction, you can take a look at lots of different sea creatures in Shark Bait Reef. This was a collaboration with Sea Life that operates various aquariums around the world. You'll encounter over 200 different species, including jellyfish, seahorses, and of course, sharks. This is a nice relaxing walkthrough attraction, which is perfect for a little downtime or when it rains, which happens quite a lot in England. The final attraction in Mutiny Bay is the Wicker Man. Added in 2018, this wooden roller coaster will take you through a historic adventure of a mysterious tribe that worships the Wicker Man. You'll encounter all the usual drops and turns, as well as some awesome effects including fire and of course the amazing icon itself. We now head to the next land, Katanga Bay, which features two classic attractions. First up is the Congo River Rapids, the classic water ride that careens down canyons, under bridges, and past various water features, including waterfalls. Most visitors end up soaked, which makes it another perfect ride on the hotter days. It also features a long tunnel shared with the other attraction in Katanga Bay, Runaway Mine Train. Opening in 1992, this is now the oldest coaster in the park. It is great for all ages, with a minimum height requirement of 90 centimeters, but still packs a punch and is a certified fan favorite of the Alton Towers faithful. We now move on to one of my favorite themed areas of the park, Gloomy Wood. This area has had a major facelift for 2023 with a re-theme to its main attraction, the Curse at Alton Manor. This was formerly the Haunted House and then the Shooting Dark Ride Jewel, but it has gone back to its horror-based roots in this brand new attraction. With an awesome storyline and theming throughout the ride, queue line and surrounding area, this is one of the best attractions in the park. The only other attraction in Gloomy Wood is the Haunted Hollow, which is just a themed walking path which will take you back to the entrance of Mutiny Bay. It includes statues and interactive exhibits that will scare even the bravest of visitors. For the next land, we head to Forbidden Valley. This is home to the famous roller coaster Nemesis, but unfortunately, it is currently closed due to a complete retrack and further improvements, but it should be returning in 2024. In the meantime, you can enjoy Nemesis 
Subterra, a part ride, part scare maze that uses the theming and lore of Nemesis and the secret organization Phalanx to create an underground nightmare. With a small drop tower section, 4D effects and scare actors, this is definitely not one for the faint hearted. Next up is Galactica, the B&M flying coaster that originally opened as air in 2002. After a re-theme in 2016 and a brief dabble into VR, Galactica still remains one of the most popular attractions in the park. It features two inversions and is quite a relaxing ride for such a big coaster. It's a great way to introduce younger riders to their first inverted coaster. Although this is not a dining guide for Alton Towers, I just have to mention the Roller Coaster Restaurant that has a unique serving system. Each table has its own track, which is linked to the kitchens, so all of the food is delivered by your very own roller coaster. The next attraction is The Blade, a pirate ship ride that has a metallic modern theme. It has been thrilling families since 1980 when it was simply known as the pirate ship in another area of the park. It was moved and rethemed for the opening of Nemesis. Every year since 2021, Alton Towers have added a few temporary flat ride attractions during the peak season, known as the Retro Squad, to bolster the park's lineup. In Forbidden Valley, there is Funk and Fly, a super trooper style ride that flies riders through the air as the center axis tilts, and it becomes quite a thrilling experience. At the moment, the Sky Ride is unavailable, so to get to the next land, you will need to walk back through the previous lands, take the shortcut through Haunted Hollow, or take the scenic route through the gardens. If you're looking for a quiet place away from the busier areas of the park, then the gardens are for you. Filled with monuments, fountains, ponds, old conservatories, and lots of amazing flowers and trees, you can really get lost in this amazing section of the park. Eventually, you should arrive at the foot of the towers. This gothic masterpiece was once home to the Earl of Shrewsbury. Most of the indoor sections are used seasonally for the special events throughout the year, but the main attraction inside the towers is Hex, the legend of the towers. This is a simple classic madhouse attraction that uses the environment around the ride to spin and spin, creating the dizzy illusion of going upside down. But the reason why this ride is so popular is due to the awesome theming and backstory, elevating it to one of the best attractions in the park. It has yet to reopen in the 2023 season, but we do hope it makes a return sooner rather than later. Behind the towers is the Alton Towers Dungeon. This is an extra paid attraction similar to other dungeons found around the UK and Europe. Drawing from real people in Staffordshire's history, this is a 45 minute experience that includes a boat ride and five different themed areas that range from hilarious, spooky, and terrifying. Next door to the dungeon is an exciting new attraction under development. Stick around until the end of the video for more details. We now head to the Dark Forest, another small land featuring two attractions. First up is Rita, the steel launch coaster that has been thrilling visitors since 2005. Although it doesn't feature any inversions, it goes from 0 to 60 in 2.5 seconds and hits plenty of high speed corners and some airtime hills, making it a great thrilling experience. Next is another awesome coaster, 13. Due to the secret nature of the ride and the heavily forested area surrounding the attraction, it is very difficult to view the ride from the outside. It features the world's first ever free falling coaster, as well as a switch track allowing the ride to travel backwards. With awesome theming and an overall fun ride, this is another great attraction in the park. Heading back behind the towers is the next land, the world of David Walliams. Opening in 2021, the area features four attractions based on the wacky stories from the famous comedian. Rides include the Royal Carousel, a classic carousel attraction where you can ride on one of the royal horses, Flavio's Fabulous Fandango, a twister style flat ride where you will need to join the dance floor and groove to the music, and Raj's Bouncy Bottom Burp, a fun frog hopper drop tower ride. The main attraction in the land is Gangster Granny the Ride. This amazing dark ride will take you on an adventure with Gangster Granny as she tries to steal the crown jewels. With lots of different show scenes including projections, animatronics and awesome special effects, you'll want to ride this over and over again. Previously, this whole area used to be known as Cloud Cuckoo Land, but now only one attraction remains. Cuckoo Cars Driving School is a great chance for the younger visitors to drive their own vehicles along the exciting course located in the tower's courtyard. If they pass, they can even get their very own driving license in the nearby store. 
moving round, we now come to the most thrilling land in the park, X Sector. As you enter the land, you will encounter a mashup of concrete and metal, a stark contrast to the rest of the park. You won't be able to miss the monstrosity of the Smiler. This insane coaster has a world record breaking 14 inversions, including loops, corkscrews, and sidewinders. With its creepy backstory and theming, this is by far the most thrilling attraction in the park. The other major ride in X Sector is Oblivion. This is a B&M dive coaster, which was the first of its kind when it opened in 1998. The ride car is stopped just before shooting down a 180 foot vertical drop straight into a misty underground tunnel, and then taking a high bank turn and arriving back at the station building. Those afraid of heights should avoid this one. As I mentioned before, some temporary attractions known as the Retro Squad are dotted around the park. Two of them are located in X Sector. Spin Jam is a Tivoli Extreme flat ride that certainly deserves a name, and Twistertron is a little tamer but is still a thrilling experience. Before we make it to the final land in the park, Spinball Whizzer is what remains of an old area, Adventureland. This is a spinning coaster that offers a unique experience compared to the other coasters in the park, as the ride car can spin as you head around the track. This is a great ride for all the family to enjoy. We now come to the final land, CBB's Land, a fun area filled with lots of rides and shows based on cartoons and TV shows shown on BBC's children's channel, CBB's. We begin with the Octonauts Roller Coaster Adventure, an awesome kiddie coaster featuring all the characters from Octonauts and special effects like smoke and bubbles, making it a great first coaster for the younger ones. Next is the Something Special Sensory Garden, a nice walkthrough attraction set up by Mr. Tumble with lots of interactive colourful games throughout. For a great view of the land, head to the Get Set Go treetop adventure. Ride inside a bug on an elevated track through a few show scenes and around most of CBB's land. Due to the low capacity of the ride, this can get a high wait time. Next up is Big Fun Showtime, a small open theatre section that currently performs alternating shows of Bing, Teletubbies and Hey Dougie. After each show, there is a chance to meet your favourite characters, making it a perfect place for fans of the shows. Next door is the Furchester Hotel Live, which is based on the British Sesame Street spin-off. It features characters from the show, including Elmo and the Cookie Monster, making it another great show in the land. Further round is the Go Jetters Roomster. Zoom Ride, an aerial spinning attraction that allows you to choose how high you fly. Next up is Hey Dougie's Big Adventure Badge, a fun outdoor playground that was added to the land in 2022. With lots of climbing features, slides and other interactive elements, this will keep the younger ones truly entertained. Next is Peter Rabbit's Hippity Hop, a pair of frog hopper drop tower rides that is perfect for those that love to show their inner bunnies. Also added in 2022 was Andy's Adventures Dinosaur Dig, where you will need to help Andy find some dinosaur fossils, identify the creature, and then learn more about the prehistoric dino in Andy's special research facility. For more energetic fun, head to Justin's house, Pyomatic Factory, a fun indoor playground. You will need to help Justin out by shooting the ingredients using the various air cannons and other fun play elements. Opposite is the Bugby Go Round, a small carousel ride where you can ride on your very own Bugby ride car. Behind this ride is Jojo and Gran Gran at home, a nice little indoor walkthrough attraction with lots of different interactive elements and hidden tunnels for the younger ones to explore. Next up is In the Night Garden Magical Boat Ride. This is a nice relaxing ride taking you on a journey to meet all the characters from In the Night Garden. We now come to the final attraction in this land, Postman Pat Parcel Post. You need to help Postman Pat by driving your very own red van and delivering the remaining parcels on the route. So that wraps up all the attractions in the park, but before we take a look at what's coming to Alton Towers, if you're planning a trip to the park, then why not check out Attraction Ticks for some great discount on Alton Towers tickets, as well as other theme parks in the UK. Check out my affiliate link below to see how much you can save on your next theme park trip. As for the future of Alton Towers, along with the return of Nemesis in 2024, there is currently a new attraction under development under the codename Project Horizon. 
this will be an indoor attraction and will likely be some sort of coaster, but no further details are known at the moment. This has an estimated opening of 2025. I hope you enjoyed the video and consider subscribing as we continue to make more attraction guides for theme parks all around the world. Check out this video for another popular theme park in the UK, Legoland Windsor, and I'll see you next time on Disney Parks Addict.